Well, there is disappointment, uh, to say lightly, by the lack of extra funding for cancer drugs in the government's budget that was announced uh, yesterday. And National had campaigned on last year saying they would fund 13 extra cancer drugs. Journalist, broadcaster and health advocate Rachel Smalley is with me. Rachel, good afternoon. Hi, Leah. How are you doing? I am good. Um, gosh, you've said I saw a post that you put out saying that your phone was running hot. Um, who was contacting you today? Oh, gosh, it started yesterday, just after uh, the budget finished, the live stream, and I was still on the phone, I think, at 10.30 last night, and it's been that way through the course of today as well. And it's chiefly patients and mm. it's patient advocates. And no one quite knows what's gone on here. And I don't think the government realised the expectation of hope among patients and patient advocacy groups of what would be in this budget. I don't think anyone was expecting a massive uplift in funding, but they did think there would be you know, a dollar uh, or at least something signalled towards cancer medicines. And the fact that there isn't anything, uh, mm. I think, is just devastating for so many people. I don't even think they've got to the space of being devastated. I think we all don't quite understand what's played out here. Why was it cancer patients who took the hit in this budget? I don't understand it when it was a commitment that was so heavily made from all three mm. parties to address the issues at Farmac and in their first year, sure, they've kept the lights on with this um, with the funding that they had to bring forward because it wasn't funded through. We had that fiscal cliff, as they call, call it. Yes. But there's no, no money for a single new medicine. How can that be? You mentioned that the National was a pre-election policy document. Uh, they said it would cost $280 million over the next four years. And, but that, you know, in the, in the scheme of things, 70-odd million a year is not a lot, is it, Rachel? It's not a lot. And that promise came off the back, or that commitment came off the back of the Cancer Agency. They did a pull together report. Uh, data would have been probably from 2020, but the report mm. came out in 2021 and compared Australia and New Zealand. And there are many drugs that should have been on that list that weren't, but the Cancer Agency said there were around 15 medicines that it would be funding for cancer if we had the funding to do so. And so uh, I think Keytruda was funded for lung cancer and another drug was funded for another immunotherapy in that time and so that left 13 and that's what National came in and said you know what we will fund those medicines. Now that's not a process that you want you don't want politicians picking medicines yes. but because we have such a low bar when it comes to cancer and oncology that's why I think National stepped in to do this. Now would that have been problematic? Absolutely. Pharmac mm doesn't like to be told what to fund. You don't really want to get into a space where you've got ring-fenced budgets. They wouldn't mm. like that. They want to be comparing the medicines with everything else that they want to fund as well. So they do need autonomy for very good reason. But nonetheless, National made this commitment. And if you had bowel cancer, head and neck cancer, blood cancer, triple negative, liver cancer, a bunch of different cancers on that list, you're thinking this medicine is going to be coming my way. And to be told, look, we'll reconsider and get back to you in a year. Mm. You know, Lloyd is right. Some patients won't be here in a year's time. And you did mention yourself, Rachel, you said that, you know, the Pharmac was not a perilous state. Labor, you yeah. know, they hadn't forward-funded yeah. medicines. Your kind of basics, were, which I saw um, Nicola Willis say this morning, was, you know, inhalers and, and diabetic yes. medication. It does and this is where they they realised. Oh, oh, apparently we've realised that this this needs to be funded. So, do you accept that as as maybe part of the reason, or do you think that's just a bit of a beat up or cover up? Uh, yeah. There's a mm, there's a little bit of a frustration in it. Yes, I understand the state that they're in, and Treasury warned the previous government not to do this because for very good reason. When you fund a medicine, I say you need a medicine for type 2 diabetes or uh, a rare disorder or mm. um, asthma or what have you, and that's funded, that's great. And, but you've got to fund that into future budgets so that the government already knows what its spend is to keep that schedule moving forward, if you like, that mm. medicine schedule. Mm. You can't go back to people and say, sorry, Leah, you know that medicine you've been on, 
not going to be funded in 2024. So that's why they give that commitment. Now, uh, I I don't know why Labor did it. Did it make their books look better? I don't know. But uh, National would have had some idea of the fiscal cliff, as they called it. Did they know the size of it? I'm not sure. But they had to come in, essentially, and then back fund just to keep, as Sarah Fitt, the CEO of Pharmax, said, the lights on. Mm. But what I don't understand is, even if they couldn't find the 70 million or even if they couldn't find you know, that 280 million over four years, what they could have done was say, look, Pharmac, here's 35 million. Uh, we want you to make some good decisions in the cancer space. Have a look at some of those high priority medicines and do what you need to do. And we'll come back to you and look at how we can increase that budget in time. But they could have just put what we would consider in a modern economy, a small amount of money to at least allow Pharmac to get two or three or four cancer medicines off right. off to a start. And why mm. they didn't do that, you know, really defies belief, really. I, I think for me, people said to me, how do you feel? And I feel, I feel rocked because I trusted the government and I thought Nicola Willis and I thought Christopher Luxon and I thought David Seymour Mm. would understand the the breadth of need and the amount of hope that was sitting on this budget and was sitting on the decisions that they had made. If you remember, the three parties came into power. Luxon promised to fund those medicines. David Seymour, to be fair to act, along with Brooke Van Belden, has always been heavily across um, Pharmac. That's, you know, they, have, they have done a lot of work in that space in opposition. New Zealand first came in and said, we'll get rid of it altogether. Now, I don't think that's the, the approach either. But all three of them came in saying, we'll do something about Pharmac. And people voted. Patients voted for those parties because of that. And now to be told, sorry, get back to us in 2025, that's what's really rocked people. And and I don't know what to say to them. You know, I believe that it would happen. And what do you say to someone who's caring for someone who's got cancer? Exactly. And what do you, um, so what do you make of what Shane Reti has said, that it is still a work in progress, the drugs will eventually be funded? Um, I mean, that's, that's, you may as well just, how long's a piece of string? Yeah, but and what I think here is a real issue is this is a major breakdown in communications on the government's part, because they had every opportunity to come out and say, right, we've looked at this, we're in a spot of bother here. This is what we're going to do. They could have said this before the budget, three, four, five days before the budget, a week before, and mm. told patients and patient groups what their plan was, what was tripping them up, and what their commitment was going to be. You can't just say, we'll get back to you. But yeah. I don't think they realised there that people were sitting watching that live stream, waiting for that. I was one of them, going, you know, oh. here it's come, it's coming, you know, I'm going to get the margarita ready for later. You know, it's going to be a thing. And, yeah. and then for, to, you know, I was going through.